Amen. Good morning, church. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen. My name is James. I'm one of the pastors here. And this Resurrection Sunday is special, friends. This day, the day where we recognize that there is hope because there is resurrection. There is hope because there is new life. There is hope because all the things that are broken and are untrue have come undone in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He is risen. Church, there's something incredible happening in our community. It's the movement of God moving forth through us, in us, because of us, <laughs> in some miraculous way. The fabric of eternal, and the physical presence is just a little bit thinner in this moment as we recognize and celebrate the beauty of Resurrection Sunday. This morning, we have baptisms. And this morning, actually, if you came to hear a sermon, a fantastic sermon, by the way, you'll have to listen to first service because we have 14 people being baptized in this service. <laughs> and I happily concede all of my time to the recognition that the faith that we profess is not a thought experiment. The attitudes of the heart, the, the sensitivity and recognition of the work of God in our community is something more than what we think, is something more than what we believe, but it compels us, it demands us, it invites us to live a life changed. And this morning we get to celebrate life change of those 14 people right here in this space. And it's not only that, but across all three of our campuses, 20 people, 20 people have said they are desiring to be symbolically buried with Christ and raised to new life by entering the baptismal waters. We're gonna hear all their stories. But before we do, we have to first understand our need for resurrection. And I hope that every one of us is here because they recognize that something is not right with our world, with ourselves, with our families, with our marriages, with our children, something is broken and you are right. The world is not as it should be. And that's when we see the invitation of Jesus moving forward to us. Imagine if you will, for the last three years of your life, you've followed after a man. You followed after somebody that you've seen raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out demons, profess people to be free of their sin, to go and sin no more. And then, just a couple days ago, he was murdered on a tree for everybody to see a mockery. The person that you thought was gonna bring about redemption, reconciliation, hope, and wholeness is killed and hung on a cross, buried in a tomb. Imagine the disorientation, imagine the confusion, imagine the heartbreak, all of your hopes, all of your dreams, everything that you want your life to be about is ruined in one moment. It's what we read in the scriptures is that early on the first day of the week, three women, not knowing what else to do, but they got up and they go to the tomb. We read this in Luke and we, we read that as they're walking to the tomb, they didn't even know how the stone that separated them from Jesus' body was going to be moved, but they knew they needed to anoint it with spices and oils to give respect to the dead. And they show up, and the stone was rolled away. And an angel is in there and says, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is risen, church! And they say, the angel says, go and tell all the, all the disciples of what you've seen here, and they run away. There's three movements that I want us to focus on this Resurrection Sunday. The first is that God still moves. In a little bit, we're gonna hear the stories of God moving in the lives of people. Whenever they have an awareness of the intonation of what God is doing, this relationship with Jesus, this presence of the Holy Spirit, whenever they have eyes to see this, God still moves, just like he moved the stone away. Another text we read there, after Jesus was raised from the dead and has been seen, there's a couple people traveling on the road, a road to Emmaus, and they're just talking with each other, distraught and confused, and just out of nowhere, Jesus shows up like he does. He surprises them with his presence, and as they're walking seven miles from Jerusalem to Emmaus, he's explaining to them and talking with them about all of the, all of the prophecies, all of the Old Testament, everything that has come true in the name of Jesus is seen on this road, and yet, the scripture says that he, they were kept from recognizing him. It wasn't until they sat down around a fire and broke bread as they did the night that Jesus was betrayed where their eyes opened 
and they're able to see the message, the love of God. What we see is that God is moving and God still moves and that Jesus surprises them on the road to Emmaus at breakfast morning that day and he surprises us as well. We're gonna hear stories of how Jesus entered into people's lives and surprised them in some of the most unexpected and amazing ways. And then we get to this passage in Matthew, chapter 28, the very end of Matthew. This is gonna be on the screen as well. Starting in verse 16, we read this. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am all with you always to the very end of the age. If you've been around in church, that's the great commission, the great calling, the great invitation, the reason why we do baptisms. I've heard it said before, it's not my quote, but I like it a lot, is that if someone can accurately predict their own death and resurrection, we listen to what they say. A little humor in that, I think. Thank you. Break some of the tension. But as Jesus shows up and tells them, this is what you need to do, there's that three words in there, but some doubted. These are people that have traveled with Jesus to see him heal the sick and raise the dead, but some doubted. These are people that have seen the resurrected Christ, that have understood his body that was hanging on the cross, but some doubted. Jesus is present in their midst, and yet some doubted. The physical presence of Jesus was there, and yet they have this invitation through the scriptures to say, you know what? It's okay to doubt. This is one of those lines for me that shows that this is far more than just some words on a page from times of old. This is something significant because if I were writing this book, I would not say that anybody doubted. It would be that this has happened, this is for true, this is, this is truth, this is what it is. But I think the humanity of the invitation of God is to recognize that even in our places of uncertainty, the Holy Spirit still invites us and is still moving. God moved the stone away and God moves in our midst. Jesus surprises the community that saw him and Jesus surprises us. And the Holy Spirit continues to invite for us to go into all the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, even though all of us have our doubts. And so we're going to hear some of these stories of baptism, some of these stories of resurrection, some of these stories of God breaking through in our physical reality to have an inclination, a sense that something more is happening. And I pray that as you see this, as you experience this, you too come face to face with the risen Lord. I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to hear Sherry's story first, and it's going to be one after the other after the other, and we are going to celebrate and cheer. And we're going to practice this in a moment because we need to be together as a community as we do so. And so as they enter the baptismal waters, we baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And when they come up that last time, church, we got to make some noise. we got to celebrate. we got to praise the Lord for the work that he is doing in our midst through the people in our community. My hope is this morning, if you have any doubts about whether faith is meaningful, is there, any, is there anything about this message of Jesus? My hope is that you appreciate those doubts and see and sense something more than you could ever ima ask for or imagine or hope for and be surprised by what Jesus is doing. Gracious God, thank you for resurrection. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for renewal. Thank you for how you have continued to move towards humanity in all of its brokenness, accepting all of our doubt, all of our uncertainty, and still inviting us home. Lord God, I praise you and I thank you for these 14 people in this room right now this morning that we're going to hear from about the work that you have done in their lives. May we be inspired. May we be challenged. May we sense your spirit. May our hearts be open to what you are doing in our world. May we be aware of our doubts and still in the midst of them, worship you. We praise you, God, for Easter Sunday. It's in your name we pray. Amen. I'm Sherry Bloom, and I feel like I've had a lifelong relationship with Jesus, but I've gone really hot and cold on church and church attendance. I 
was really involved as a young adult in the church, and I even became a Eucharistic minister. I was married in the church, raised my children in the church. But then after 20 years of marriage, I went through a painful divorce. And at that point, I no longer felt comfortable in the church. I was no longer allowed to partake in the sacraments, sacraments that I had even been a part of and been able to administer to others in the church. I was no longer allowed to be a part of that because of my divorce and it, it hurt, it was painful to me and I stopped going. And after a few years, a couple of friends of mine invited me to come to the meeting house with them. And in fact, at that point, I was, I was going through a lot of painful emotions with the divorce. Um, I found myself crying like a baby through the songs and the service, but it really made me feel close to God. And, and at that point in time, I, I came very sporadically. But then fast forward a few years, and just several months ago, my sons, my adult sons, decided they wanted to start coming to church. And they have brought our family back to church again. My, my eldest son, Luke, in particular, he instigated it. And, and he's like, I'm gonna to go to church, who wants to come? And so as a mother, that is just an amazing event. My husband and my sons and I will be baptized. And as a mom, there's just nothing, there's no greater thing that could, I could wish for than for my family to declare their love for Jesus together. It's, it's been a long journey and I'm really excited about it. And I, know, <laughs> I didn't wanna cry, but I'm really proud of my sons, and it's the beginning of something even more beautiful for all of us. So Sherry, is it your desire to follow after Jesus as your Savior and Teacher and Lord? It is. Ben? I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. My name is Art Streeter. My journey through faith started as a um, baby. I was baptized and raised in the Catholic Church. I went through the, um, the sacraments and never really understood why. I just did them dutifully. As I grew older, I had children, raised them in the Catholic Church, but they lost interest in it very quickly and I didn't keep them interested. So I was largely non-practicing, um, still a believer, but not a practicer, practitioner, I guess. In uh, 2017, I was diagnosed with throat cancer. And one of the first things that happened was a college roommate of mine sent me a link to daily gospel readings. And I thought, ah, what a weird, thoughtful, but a little bit strange kind of a, a gift. I found that I would read them every day, and as time went on, I started to very much look forward to them. I was getting up earlier and earlier in the morning to read them. They'd come out around 2.30 in the morning, and so I wouldn't sleep all the way, and I'd be up around 3 o'clock and look at today's. At the same time, I started praying more, and I learned a couple of things. Um, a lot of my prayers came true and continue to come true. And as a result of that, I have had increasing faith. Um, and I, I find that as more and more things happen that I pray for, my faith grows stronger and my skepticism from prior years is harder and ho harder to hold on to. <laughs> I've enjoyed very much this journey uh, back into faith and in Jesus Christ. My um, inclination, my desire for baptism is really two parts. One is, it's not necessarily that I want to, I almost feel compelled to. I don't know why, I may do, but I don't know why uh, for sure. The other reason is my stepson Luke wants very strongly to do this and I want to do this with him as part of a family. There's a big part of me, it's really curious as to how it's going to feel. I'm really excited about that. So Art, is it your desire to follow after Jesus as your savior, your teacher, and your Lord? Yes. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, 
in the name of the Holy Spirit. I am Ethan Bloom. Um, Jesus to me is God sending his only son and just showing us the human side of himself and um, bringing us to follow him closer and leading by example. As I read the stories of Jesus, it brings to light the way God would want us to work with one another and spread the love that he has for all humans. And for me, why I've chosen to get baptized again, because I was raised in the Catholic Church and baptized as a baby, what I really wanted to do was do this again. Now that I'm an adult and can make this decision for myself, it just seems to mean a whole lot more now as an adult. Um, now that I know what it means to be a follower of Christ and uh, try to live up to his example. Over the last couple of years, I've gotten into farming. Uh, I've been farming full time for the last two to three years. And through that, I've gotten to see a lot of God's work at hand in the natural world. And I feel closer to Christ now more than ever. So now's the time. Based off your profession of faith, is your desire to follow Jesus as your Savior, your teacher, and your Lord? It is. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Come on! My name's Luke Blue. I was lucky enough to be born into a Christian family um, and knew God from a young age. I had a children's Bible that I loved to read, but I think I just kind of liked the stories. I didn't really know exactly what they meant. I didn't understand them. I knew what it was to believe in God, but not that part of it was following Jesus and learning from him, being a student of Jesus. I found myself living a lifestyle uh, that was all about my own self-pleasure. I abused every substance imaginable. I wanted to live like a rock star, and I did, but I grew away from my family and my friends at the end. Uh, I had a number of health problems and had given up thinking that I would never be able to come back from it. I lost my ability to walk uh, about, uh, you know, maybe a year and a half or so ago. You would have seen me in a wheelchair. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of you see me now walking around with uh, a cane but I had some, a lot of damage from the things I was doing and I just continued in my downward spiral. My family tried to help, but I had given up on myself. Um, I thought that I was too far gone. And after two times in rehab, I was, I was still struggling. Um, really, it's a miracle that I'm alive. It's a miracle that I'm here. Um, but the real miracle is what happened to, to bring me here. One night, it was toward the ends of, toward the end of you know, what I would call kind of a particularly bad binge that I was on, my mom subtly mentioned to me that I should watch The Chosen, um, as she'd been doing for over a year at that, at that point. I started watching it that day at around 3 a.m. And even though I wasn't in the best state of mind at the time, I laughed, I cried, I felt Jesus calling me again. It was like somebody turned a light on uh, in this dark space that I was in. And like I had cracked the Bible open again for, for the very first time, you know, hearing these stories for the first time and realizing what they meant and the weight of it. I didn't stop watching for over 24 hours at that time. I, I, I just couldn't stop. I was, I was just so energized by it. I started reading the Bible again. You hear stories about in the, in the Bible about being welcomed, welcomed back when you come back. And that's, that's truly how I feel. It means, it means so much to me to be able to make this commitment as an adult, truly trying to understand what the teachings of Jesus Christ mean. Um, I want to live as a student of him. I want to walk as he did, as close to, as I can, and do his will. Throughout this whole process, there's been a verse that has stuck with me and meant a lot to me and really just kind of summarized what I, what I feel that I'm going through. It's Matthew uh, chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. Your eye is, is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, 
your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light that you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. I truly believe that Jesus is the only way out of that darkness. I tried so many other things and nothing worked. I didn't realize that through all those things I was doing before, I was really searching for him, uh, but just in the wrong places. And now I feel like I've, I've found something and that though I'm not perfect, I am on the right path again. So today, uh, the reason that I'm getting baptized is to celebrate the work that I see Jesus doing in my life, to celebrate that I want to be a student who is of his again, um, you know, and that no one's perfect, that I'm far from it, but that I'm on the right path again, and that he's guiding me, and I'm gonna trust him to keep doing that. Luke, you've been through a journey, but at this point, is it your desire to follow Jesus as your savior, your teacher, and your Lord? It is. And I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> My name is Steve Chris. My wife Sherry and I have four children, Viva, who's 19, Piper is 13, PJ or Penelope is six, and Blaze is five. And we've been coming to uh, the Meeting House Church for about three years now since we moved back from Pittsburgh. To me, Jesus really represents the ultimate love and sacrifice. I can imagine sacrificing myself for one of my children. Um, I cannot, for the life of me, imagine sacrificing one of my children for someone like me. To see God and to know that he sacrificed his only son for us is, is just a love beyond what I can imagine. So the reason that I wanna be baptized today and the reason why I'm here is, is really twofold. One um, is to honor my father who passed away. He decided that he was going to be baptized as an adult. Um, and I was baptized as a child, as a Catholic. I grew up Catholic, was, you know, uh, baptized and confirmed. Um, but the second reason really is for me to acknowledge um, this transformation that I've been on for the past probably year and a half. Um, I've stumbled along the way, um, and this is an opportunity for me to sort of reaffirm that baptism that I had as a child and that confirmation um, and really to show my wife, my family, my community, my friends um, that I'm committed to following Jesus. So Steve, living that legacy, is it your desire to follow after Jesus as your Savior, your teacher, and your Lord? It is. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit.
My name is Audrey Noel Saito. When I asked Pat why all of the people were in the creek at the church picnic, he told me that they had all decided to follow Jesus and they wanted the world to know by being baptized in the creek for all of us to see. Much like Jesus had been buried and rose again, I knew right away that I wanted to do that. I love Jesus and I know that he loves me. I believe that he died on the cross to cover my sins so that I could go to heaven. And I believe that he rose up out of the grave and is alive today, which is why we celebrate Easter today. I want you to know that I've decided to follow Jesus. I hope you all will join me. So Audrey, is it your desire to follow Jesus as your savior and your teacher and your Lord? And I baptize you in the name of the Father. And then the name of the Son. There we go. And then the name of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> My name is Bradley Miller, and I've been going to this church for nine years. The reason I want to get baptized is because I want to be God's faithful servant. And Jesus is um, my father to me because um, he's always there for me and he's always by my side. I hope people know that I'm choosing to follow him and be with him. So Bradley, is it your desire to follow Jesus? Yes. As your savior, teacher, and Lord? All right, then I baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> in the name of the Son, <laughs> in the name of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hi, I'm Amber Kane. My fiance is Brent Miller, and my son's Bradley Miller. The reason I want to be baptized is I want to leave behind my old life and announce my new life in Christ. I'm ready to go public with my faith and to be a better role model for my two boys. They've already noticed since I've been coming the last two years, they've been complimenting me just on how my attitude's been better, how I'm just more, they want to be around me more. Yeah, it just feels good. I feel peace of mind. I feel saved. I just, ha I had a rough life till two years ago and like I wasn't coming to church like I needed to be. And like the last two years, I've been coming almost every Sunday. And I just, I feel better with having Jesus in my corner than having him not in my corner, to be honest. And doing this not just for me, but for my family and everybody around me, it feels good. Amber, is it your desire to follow Jesus as your savior, your teacher, and your Lord? Yes. And I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> I'm Kirsten Innerst. Um, my family, I have a boyfriend, Sergio Garcia, and then I have two kids, Arthur and Sophia. Arthur is four years old and Sophia is nine months old now. I want to be baptized because I want to grow closer to Jesus. Growing up was definitely a challenge. I wasn't really brought up in a going to church and talking about Jesus kind of family. It was more um, my grandmother. My grandmother was the one bringing me up in um, the Jesus way. When I was six or seven, she ended up having a stroke and um, that kind of stopped everything. Like. I really didn't hear about Jesus after that, or there was no more going to church after that. Recently, I just started up going back to church with my sister and having kids. I want my kids to be brought up Christian, knowing who Jesus is, and definitely not like how my background was. So baptism to me is a way for me to get closer to God, um, to know who he is and just to renew myself. My grandmother showed me the importance of being a Christian. And now having kids, I wanna show them the importance of being a Christian. It makes me feel like I'm doing something right. From what I can think of, nobody in my family has been baptized, so hopefully me being that change in the family 
and following Jesus maybe will change everything. I don't know. So Kirsten, this is your desire to follow Jesus as your Savior, your teacher, and your Lord. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Connor Helm Betts. Jesus to me, he brings me joy in my heart and when I'm going through anxiety, he always helps me. It just feels really weird. It's just like you want to do something, but you don't. And then you just get stuck in the slumps a lot. And sometimes it was so bad that I just wanted to fast forward the whole entire world and go until like I'm super old and just stay like that. Kids my age, it's really hard to go through anxiety because, like, you're small and you don't know what's going on in the world. So I encourage other people that are going through this, like kids on my baseball team. I know there's a couple kids that have anxiety, like me, but it really helps when I read my Bible and when I pray. The reason why I want to get baptized is because I want to bring joy and I want to bring, I want to lay down my old life and have a new life. And I want to also encourage other people to, like on my baseball team, I know there's a couple kids that don't believe. I also want to teach them about the Word of God and encourage them to get baptized. Jesus helped me a lot on the lines of like, he would, it would kind of be like a big hug. Like I would feel hope again and I'll be excited. So Connor, is it your desire to follow Jesus as your savior and your teacher and your Lord? Yes. And I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> My name is Cara Jean Spatz. Jesus to me is a the Savior to the world, and I want to be baptized to lay my old life down and start a new journey with Jesus. I also want to be a pastor in an order and share the word of God with others throughout the world. I also want to share in my local communities with like my family, friends, and other people that I'm close with. I also want to be an inspiring person and bring joy to lots of people. I also have friends that are not relationship relationship with Jesus, so I want to teach them first before I teach others. God, is it your desire to follow Jesus as your Savior, Teacher, and Lord? Yes. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Corbin Betts, I think Jesus is our Lord and Savior. I asked my mom to be baptized 
when I was like five. Because my heart was on fire. When I pray I read the Bible, I feel like my heart's on fire. I want to be baptized because I want to lay my old life down and start a new one so I can follow Jesus. Oh, so Corbin, do you desire to follow Jesus as your Savior, your teacher, and your Lord? Yes. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> My name is Kevin Mack. I've been coming to the Meeting House for about three years with my wife, Christy, my daughter, Skylar, and my son, Connor. Uh, in that time, I've really come to find this place as a church home. When I started my faith in Christ, it was really when I was a kid at Second Pres, so right down the street. In that time, I went, to, I was baptized as a child. I went through my faith journey and came to a point of confirmation and that was a big step for me because confirmation was a very long process that involved a lot of people walking with me and really showing me what it was to live in Christ and it was a period of time where I really learned a lot and it was very much something that was very important to me and since then my faith has been important to me it's ebbed and flowed through life but now at this stage of my life I really came to the meeting house and felt really challenged in my faith and challenged to grow in my faith and in that time I've really seen this community and seen being a part of this community as something that's important. A few years ago I had a health scare and this community rallied around me and seeing how this community rallies around people makes it something that I really want to be a part of as part of my growing in my faith and sort of wanting to take a stand and show that as a new period of my life. Uh, I, I know this community values believer baptism and I'd like to be baptized. Following Christ means being part of a community. And that's why I'm being baptized today. So Kevin, is it your desire to follow Jesus as your savior and your teacher and Lord in this community? It is. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Grant Howard. I'm um, from Carlisle, uh, 31 years old. I um, have a beautiful wife, uh, Ryan Howard, and three kids, uh, Jaden, Isaiah, and Harper. In June 2021, my wife, Ryan, uh, was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer while pregnant with her third son, Harper. Uh, about three months later, early September, uh, about a week before Harper was born, my mom also passed away from stomach cancer. Um, It's definitely a difficult time, you know, for me during this time, because life was so perfect that all of a sudden it all just came crashing down. For the first probably year after my mom's passing and my wife being diagnosed, you know, it was always why. Why did it happen to them? So I was in a pretty dark place. I think kind of as a lot of people would, I kind of lost hope. Um, and then when we started coming to the meeting house, um, you know, I started to get a hope back. And, um, it's kind of when, I guess you could say, you got the Holy Spirit, um, was listening to uh, some songs that we were singing at the beginning in church. Um, and during that time is when I got peace, everything just felt calm. Um, and then, about 10 minutes after that, Pastor Bob got up, started speaking about baptism. Um, at that moment, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Uh, you know, I want to start following the Lord Jesus Christ and, you know, partaking in baptism on Easter Sunday. Baptism has sparked something in my heart because uh, with just the idea and thought of Jesus Christ being there behind you 100% of the way. And, you know, ever since we started coming to church more and more, um, <laughs> happy to say I was able to agree through my mom's death. Uh, <laughs> every day is still hard, obviously, but it, it does get easier and easier, <clears throat> um, you know, following the Lord, knowing that 
I am a child of God and that, um, you know, Jesus will always be there, always have our backs. And, you know, he's always there for us to, you know, lean on and rely on. That's kind of how I move forward and start moving in with, uh, you know, going to church and being with Jesus is how I was able to become in peace with everything. <laughs> so Grant, is your desire to follow Jesus as your Savior, your teacher, and your Lord? It is. And I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. <laughs>